This 39 inch carbon fiber camera slider from Nuia is an excellent way to add movement to your footage and add depth to your storytelling. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews. I hope everyone's fine and well and having a fantastic day. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. This particular model is the manual version, so there's no app control unfortunately, and it costs £305 in the UK at the time of recording. I'll leave links in the description as always, and I'm not sponsored or linked to New Year for this video in any way, this is just my personal experience. So it comes in this nice black carry case with orange piping around the edging, and a double zip that goes around the upper part of the back. It's a much improved case on the last version, in my opinion. Phew, I thought we actually had a damaged belt there for a second. Luckily, it's just unfastened. I think it's sent like that to protect it during shipping. So, we get the nice New Year ball head. We get a dual USB battery charger. We get the remote control, which is wired, unfortunately. It's connected via an RJ45 Ethernet cable. And then we get a new ear battery. Finally, the aforementioned RJ45 cable. And there's various shutter leads there. There are five in total with various ends. These are particularly useful for time lapses and things like that. And they will fit various cameras and devices. We also get an Allen key and a couple of spare bolts. These are for the motor and stuff just in case you need to make some maintenance or disassemble it for any reason. The carbon fiber rails look fantastic in my opinion. The aluminium fixtures and fittings are very well machined with a nice matte black finish. It has very smooth movement and an overall clean design. The battery that is included is the New Year NPF550. It's just your standard New Year replacement battery and it clicks into the controller just like so. It even comes with around 20% power, so you could use it right away. It says searching for points A and B, but we don't have it wired up right now, so we'll come back to that. On to the belt then. There are two sleds, one at each end of the belt, that lock into two bays, one at each end of the slider. In the center, I like to drop the belt down into like a U shape, and I loop it onto the cog that has the teeth on. Then we ensure both ends are over the rollers, then take your sled, pop it into the bay, lock it into place, but when you lock it into place you just want to check that the belt's not too loose so that you get unwanted camera movement or that it's not too tight and that you get accidental damage. There's also a lock in the middle on the actual sled itself which stops this moving around while you're trying to get things done. Don't forget to loosen that off before you try to use the slider. The ball head is very premium feeling. It actually feels very high quality. It looks pretty good too. Real smooth movement, nice and fluid. And it's good for camera weights up to 11 pounds, which is 5 kg. Or if you have the slider on a 45 degree angle, that will reduce the weight limit to 5.5 pounds, which is 2.5 kg. It has a one quarter inch mounting sled at the top, which can also be offset and has a center tracking dial at the bottom. Again, it feels very premium. Very good. Unfortunately, I don't actually own a DSLR camera just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my new ear phone holder, which I got separately. I'll also leave links to this in the description as well, just in case you guys are interested in that. While we're on the subject of mounting, there's three mounting holes on each side. There's one three-eighths hole and two quarter-inch holes. Then, in the center, you've got a mounting plate again with three three-eighths holes and three quarter-inch holes. It's the same for the other side. The only thing I did find was mounting it centrally on a tripod give me some slight instability issues. So I recommend either keeping one end of the slider on the floor or using two tripods, one on each end. They've also got these feet. There's two on each side. They're pretty cool. They're spring-loaded and have crocodile teeth to lock them into place. So they're very sturdy. And again, everything is engineered very well here. I would describe this as a premium item. 
On the top we have these two threads that allow for a 20 degree movement that allows you to centre track. Very simple design and it works very well. I seem to have misplaced my black RJ45 cable but we've got a white one here. This should do the job just fine. Pop this in and see how this functions. So once we switch it on, we're met with the New Year logo. And then we've got a couple of simple options here. We've got video mode, time lapse, reset A and B, and settings. Then you've got manual or auto. And then you've got speed, gradient, and start. You just press and click inward to select and use the thumbstick to navigate up and down through your settings and left and right to move your slider. The slider won't move while you're navigating through the settings. You actually need to press start and then you'll be able to use the functionality of the slider. You can also adjust the speed settings. You can set it anywhere from 100 down to 1%. To be honest, when you move it from like 90 to 80, you don't see much of a difference with the eye, though the camera will pick that up. The motor is incredibly quiet. As you can hear, it's barely audible. You can literally hear the odd little sound. Well, it's montage time then, guys. Well, that was the first montage that I've actually ever tried, so I would really appreciate you guys letting me know in the comments whether you would appreciate more of that kind of content or not. In regards to this camera slider, I give this four stars out of five. I think this is absolutely amazing. I really like it. Its quality is outstanding. It's carbon fiber, so it's really light to carry around and stuff. It comes in a nice quality carry case that's got all protective padding around it. Now, these old New Year versions, when you used to put them in the case, you used to need to disassemble it completely to keep them safe. Whereas with this, you just need to fold up the feet and it's good to go. Obviously, you'll need to remove your ball head, otherwise you might cause damage to your bag, but otherwise, it's really quick and easy to fold and pack away and take to your next project. It can be mounted in several ways. I really like this, and I think it's an awesome addition to any filmmaker's kit bag. It's also very user-friendly with all of the accessories that you'll need included in the bag. The charger, the controller, the cables, and even some shutter cables and stuff for your future projects. If you found any part of this video helpful, or if you enjoyed any part of it, please leave a like on the video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel with your notifications on, that way you never miss any future uploads. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in my next video.